All right, welcome back folks. Today I want to talk about this guy right here. This is the Oryx chassis for the Thompson Center Compass. This Oryx brand is owned by MDT or Modular Driven Technologies. And this Oryx is kind of like their budget line, I guess. This guy is 400 bucks, which is roughly twice the price of the Thompson Center Compass, which is a little bit comical, but it's quite a bit cheaper than the other chassis systems out on the market. And for the Compass, this is really our only option. The higher end chassis aren't even available. So glad to have it, glad that it's on the market and looking forward to trying it out. Now, my regular viewers will know, we've already had the Thompson Center Compass in this guy right here, which is a Boyd's Pro Varmint stock that's done a really great job. So why in the world would I get an Oryx chassis? Well, I didn't realize this chassis was on the market. I don't do a very good job of keeping up with the new stuff, but during a recent live stream, I was talking about my 300 Winchester Magnum Compass that's really hasn't been shooting well since we put it into a Boyd stock like this one. And I'm in the process of pillar and glass bedding that stock. I think that's gonna fix all the problems. And that's really, that's no knock on Boyd's because Boyd's right there on their website tells you that some bedding work might need done with these. Luckily, with my 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what we're gonna be shooting today and which is what this chassis is for, it shoots great. It shot great with the factory stock. It shot very well with this Boyd stock that has no bedding work done to it. And I expect it to shoot great in the Oryx. So why didn't I get an Oryx for the 300 Winchester Magnum instead? Well, the 6.5 Creedmoor is the short action version of the Compass and the 300 Win Mag is the long. Well, Oryx is only making this for the short action right now. I'm really hoping they'll start making them for the long action, but as of right now, they just don't. So back to why I bought this, on one of my recent live streams, we were talking about this and my 300 Winchester Magnum and you know they, everybody was informing me that these were on the market and some donations started rolling in and before I knew it, people had <laughs> donated money for this because they wanted to see it. So it's a little bit of a ridiculous purchase when I've already got a Boyd's that's, that shoots great, but it was made possible by those donations. The other thing is that I'll probably be buying additional uh, Thompson Center Compass rifles in the future. So I'll be putting both of them to good use. Now the chassis is 400 bucks. Did I already say that? I think I probably did. I also bought a spacer kit to adjust the length of pull. Right now I've got all of the spacers that came with it in there just to kind of show you the maximum. It comes with, I think it came with four of these plus some longer bolts. That was an additional 20 bucks and they charged 20 bucks for shipping. So my total was about $440 for this guy from Oryx. Now the other thing is it uses AI magazines. People seem to love these magazines and prefer stocks and chassis that use them. And strictly speaking, it's probably an upgrade over the Thompson Center Magazine, which is a rotary magazine that holds five rounds. But the awesome thing about the Thompson Center Magazine is that it allows a gigantic overall length. We can load out to 2.970 in this magazine and still feed. So switching to the AI magazines, I was really worried about losing that overall length flexibility that we've come to enjoy here with the compass. So I picked up two different AI magazines. The first is Magpul. These are very affordable, $33 is what I paid. And then just yesterday I saw them on sale for $28.99. This is a five round version. They also make a 10 round version. And these have a maximum overall length of 2.860. So we're giving up 110 thousandths of overall length when we leave behind the Thompson Center Magazine. But a lot of the times 2.870 is just fine to get the job done. MDT also sells a similar uh, polymer magazine. They are eight rounds. They don't have different capacities. They're, they're eight rounds, but they have a max overall length of 2.800. So I passed on the MDT polymer mag and decided to go with Magpul instead. Hopefully we don't run into any feeding issues. I also bought this guy right here, which is a metal mag from Accurate Mag. Yeah, accurate-mag.com. I was reading good reviews about them. Now this guy allows for an overall length of 2.950. So we're almost up to the same capacity we had with the Thompson Center Magazine. This was just about 20,000 shorter, but that should be plenty. Now, if you'll notice toward the front of this, there's a bit of a gap there. In my magazine, that is bare metal. They sell two versions. Yeah, there it is. So they sell two versions. This is the one without what they call a blinder plate. So the standard version has got a piece of, I don't know, I guess, I think it's plastic that runs down the front of the magazine. And some actions absolutely require that to feed properly, like the way the feed ramp 
is, you know, right in front of the magazine. If you try to use long cartridges in a magazine like this, they won't fit, they'll hit the feed ramp. I think the Remington 700 in particular, if you wanna run without the blinder plate, you have to have your feed ramps modified and all that garbage. Well, we don't have to worry about, in the, about that in the Thompson Center Compass. We've never had any uh, feeding issues whatsoever, even out to the very longest cartridges we could fit in the Thompson Center magazine. Now this one, I did go with the 10 round version. They have five and 10 round versions. And these metal mags, you pay for them. This was $70 plus shipping, and the shipping was like 11 bucks. So I got over $80 in this uh, stupid magazine just for a little bit of extra overall length. A little bit depressing. So between the Oryx chassis, the extended length of pull kit, the magazine, yeah, both magazines, I got a little bit over 500 bucks in this. So that's a little bit crazy for a $200 rifle. But we know that the Compass doesn't shoot like a $200 rifle, so it's a lot less ridiculous than it sounds. One thing here, let me see here. I got so much crap to talk about. I got a whole page full of notes. Shipping was incredible. This thing was out the door as soon as I ordered it, and I had it in my hands in like two or three days. So no delays or any problems like that. We covered the magazines. I already talked about the Boyds, right? This is what we've been using, and it's been doing a great job. This is a Boyds Pro Varmint at the time. The Boyd's at one wasn't available for the Compass. I saw that it is now. So Boyd's has some great options at uh, a much lower price. These, this uh, Pro Varmint was just over $150. Really, really sharp looking. I love the look of the Boyd's laminate stocks. And this one here for the Compass has shot very well from the get-go. You know, the thing about our, six, our Creedmoor Compass is that the original plastic stock shot just great. We mainly upgraded to the Boyd's just for ergonomics, right? A, a uh, traditional shaped stock like this is a little bit hard to shoot off bags. So I wanted something that was a little more comfortable for bench testing. Now the weight difference between these stocks is gigantic. The factory plastic stock is one pound 14 ounces. So just under two pounds, it weighs almost nothing. So with this stock, the Compass is a very nice, light, handy rifle, perfect for traipsing around the woods with. It does have a little bit of flex, like especially up here, you know, in the forend, the tighter, the, the fit around the barrel channel is a little bit tight. So always worried about it flexing too much and maybe making contact with the barrel, although we've never really had problems with that. But overall, nothing really to complain about with the factory stock, other than that it doesn't shoot off a bench very well. Well, most people aren't buying this rifle to shoot off a bench, they're buying it to hunt with. So that's not really a huge deal. The Boyd's Pro Varmint weighs right at three pounds. So a little bit over a pound heavier than the factory stock, but it's still very comfortable to hold and, you know, carry around and stuff. Like whenever I put this on, I didn't feel like it made the gun unreasonable to carry in the woods or anything like that. So I really like the Boyd's, really nice to shoot off the bench. Nice flat spot back here that rides a bag really nicely. Uh, slightly rounded, but kind of flat-ish forend that rides the front rest really well. You'll see I've got the sling studs removed just so they don't interfere with my front bag. Same thing here on the back, but it does come with those. So you get that, you know, sling studs and junk, but the weight of the Oryx is noticeable. Like this is heavier, which is what most people want when you're going to a chassis like this. Like you don't buy this to hike up in the hills with, or at least I don't think most people do. This guy's just a little bit over four pounds, four pounds, two ounces. So you've basically got a two pound original stock, a three pound Boyd stock, and then a four pound Oryx stock. So at twice the weight of the factory stock, it does make a noticeable difference, but it's still not bad. Now here's one thing, here's our, here's our Thompson Center Compass in 6.5 Creedmoor. And if we set this guy down in here, just for a, for a quick look, you'll notice there is a comically large amount of space between the barrel channel and this thin little uh, factory barrel. It kind of has a slightly goofy look, especially because the, you know, the M-lock stuff on the bottom, which I probably should have mentioned that, this thing does have M-lock stuff here for attaching all of your crazy devices. And it's got a threaded little guy right here, which I assume is for a sling swivel, perhaps. I uh, should have looked that up. I believe this hole here is for a quick detach sling swivel, if I'm not mistaken. But otherwise, nothing, nothing going on back here. Like, I, I don't know if you could mount a monopod. Like, you know, a lot of stocks and chassis have stuff back here where you can mount all of your crazy accessories. The comb height is adjustable right here. It does need tools. There's two Allen screws here. 
you loosen those up and it raises up and down. I will say it is a pain in the ass to move up and down, but that adjustability is there. Now you can get an adjustable comb or adjustable cheek riser on the Boyd's Pro Varmint or any of the Boyd's I think. And the Boyd's At One comes with one standard. It has a push button adjustable uh, cheek riser and length to pull on the At One. So that's really cool about the At One and it's available here on the Pro Varmint. But for the Oryx, you're looking at tools to do both of those functions, which I guess is just what you get. Like I said, this is their budget line of chassis, right? They've got to do something to differentiate between this Oryx and the more expensive offerings. And I guess adjustability seems to be the place they've cut. Another thing to keep in mind, like this, I almost did a really stupid thing. A Boyd stock comes with a recoil lug that's already installed. And with the Boyd's, at least the ones I've got, they're epoxied in there. The Oryx does not. You've got to remove the recoil lug from your factory stock and move it over into the Oryx. If you don't do that, if you just take your action like this, drop it in and bolt it in, you're going to have a really bad time because your action screws are going to be the only thing transferring all that energy. The recoil lug is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get out of the factory stock. And you might notice a tiny little silver spot, like trying to get a hold of it and yank it out of there. I did kind of make the slightest little booger on mine, but I think it's okay. But in the Oryx, it goes in nice and easy. And I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but it seems like this recoil lug sits a little bit too low in the Oryx chassis. I'll try and get some pictures of it comparing the height in the Oryx versus the height in the Boyd's versus the height in the factory stock it seems like the Oryx is a little bit lower and it kind of freaks me out a little bit. Like I'm afraid of the barrel jumping the recoil lug and I really don't want to end up with a scope through the eyeball. That would probably be the best case scenario. Like that could, that could be a devastating spontaneous disassembly. So what I did is just grab a tiny little piece of duct tape. That's the width of the recoil lug just to kind of give it a little bit of a shim so it sits up a little bit higher. And I've played around with this a little bit and it still seems to go together just fine. Like I can feel, it doesn't feel mushy or anything like that. So I don't think that's screwing anything up and it looks like, it just looks a whole lot better. Like it sticks up just the tiniest little amount now. Like it sticks up just a tiniest little amount more than without it and dropping the action in there, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a problem. Like it still feels like it's sitting all the way down in there. And when I'm tightening up the front screw, the front action screw, it feels tight. You know, it feels solid. It feels like metal on metal. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to squish a piece of duct tape. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I want to run that guy is with a, a piece of tape under that recoil lug, just, just for safety, just to make me feel a little bit better. So what I want to do now is just take some shots. We'll shoot a couple groups with this, and then we'll shoot a couple groups with the Boyds, and then we'll shoot a couple groups with the factory stock, just to see if we see any difference. With this gun, I don't expect to see much. Like I mentioned, the gun shoots great in the factory stock, it shoots great in the Boyds, and I expect it to shoot great in the Oryx. This would be a whole lot more interesting test if they had a long action version where we could test with my 300 Winchester Magnum. But it is what it is. And I'll tell you what, if any of you guys have the long action compass and are sincerely interested in the Oryx, they've got a little request section on their website where you can tell them what actions you want them to make these for next. So, you know, like I said, if you're genuinely interested in one, go over to their website, fill that out, just to let them know that we want one for the long action compass. So I've got two loads I wanna test. The first is a 140 grain Hornady match boat tail hollow point with IMR 4451 powder. The second load is 140 grain spear gold dot with reloader 16. It's actually the load I'm gonna be hunting with this year. My uh, gun season comes in next weekend. All right, I think that's it. Is there anything else? Nope, I think, uh, well, one thing, I'm about to bolt these together. The torque specs, what I saw on their website was uh, they, suggest 60 foot pounds, or it was in the little manual that came with it. So they suggest you start with 60 foot pounds of torque on your action screws. Now the rear action screw does require that you remove the 
The grip, no big deal. You shouldn't be needing to get to that guy very often anyway. So I'm gonna to torque these to 60 foot pounds. I'm gonna make sure and you know tap the stock a couple times against the table, make sure that recoil lug is making really good contact with the barrel and the stock. And that's really all there is to the install. With the Boyds, I'll be running uh, 40 inch pounds. Did I say foot pounds earlier on this one? You guys know I meant inch pounds, right? 60 inch pounds. This guy I'm gonna run 40 or 45, I forget what I'd normally do. Yeah, 40, let's call it 40. And similar number with the factory stock, I'll do 40 or 45 inch pounds. And for that, I've got a Wheeler Fat Wrench. If you don't have one, you need to get one. I'll throw a link in the description. Pretty handy little tool for getting all your action screws and scope mount bases, rings, all that stuff put together and torquing them properly. So that's it. Let's get to shooting. So we're going to start with the 140 grain Hornady loads and we're going to use the Magpul magazine because these are 2.8 inches of overall length and they fit in the Magpul. The next bullet we're gonna shoot, the Spear Gold Dot is at 2.9 inches and it's a little bit too long for the Magpul. So we'll be switching over to the Accurate Mag Metal Magazine. First things first, we need to double check our zero. I've got an extra, extra dot down there. We should be sighted in and good, but never hurts to check. Seems to be feeding just fine off that magazine. So let's see if it'll hit where we're aiming. All right, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I can't get the trigger to go off. Let's unload it real quick. Seems okay. I don't know what the heck. Let's try it again. All right, let's go ahead and move left a half minute and we'll go down a quarter minute. So it should be right on. And let's do two more warm up shots just to make sure that scope adjustment's correct and settled in. The chassis is pretty like ergonomically comfortable. You'll notice I shoot low rings. A lot of people these days seem to like their freaking scope jacked way up in the sky. I, I still like them way down low hugging the barrel. And you can see the, the cheek riser comb adjustment for me is, if you could see it, right about level with the back. So this is all totally level. So it feels good this way. I feel like I really kind of need to squish my face down into this guy a little bit to get lined up and I like that. All right, two more test shots and then we'll get on to the real stuff. My bags are kind of settling in a little bit. So I need to bring down my front rest a touch. Huh, didn't seem to move very much from that scope adjustment. That's fine. We'll just roll with this. Now I assume that we won't have any point of impact shift as we move between the different stocks. I don't know. I'll be interested to see. So I think they all fit well. So I would assume they all shoot to the same point of impact. That's why we test, I guess. All right, this time it's for real. Let's see if we can shoot a good group. I don't know if my trigger has gotten dirty or something has gotten jammed into it while I've had this gun apart or something, but it's kind of being a pain in the butt. Stupid gun doesn't want to go off, but that's okay because that kind of makes me need to, to grip the grip a little bit more because a lot of times I'll either not even touch the grip at all or have an extremely light touch. Isn't a very, isn't a very good way to evaluate a new grip that you've got. So at least this, you know, I kind of need to get a hold of it for the heavy trigger pull and it feels good. Like I like the grip. Like I said, it's got a pretty pronounced palm swell. So somebody with small hands would probably find it too big, perhaps. Yeah, I can't tell if that's the magazine hanging that up right at the beginning or if it's just the, you know, the compass bolt being a little bit 
yeah, a little bit wobbly and like it likes to hang unless you have a very straight back and straightforward sort of pull. Another thing I noticed on this uh, stock, playing around with it a while back, was it's very hard to single feed. With the other stocks and the Thompson Center Magazine, it's pretty easy. But this, I guess it just sits down there in there a little bit too low. And I think the way the feed lips are, where they're pretty high here in the back, the round just kind of sits with the nose down a touch whenever you try and single feed. And it just, it, it wants to dive down. So that sucks a little bit. All right, one more shot. All right, that looks like a pretty good group. It's about what we've come to expect out of this load with the 140 Hornady, just a great shooting bullet in the Thompson Center Compass, at least mine. So now it's time to switch over to the 140 grain Spear Gold Dot, and we'll switch to the metal magazine and see how this guy feeds. Both magazines seem to, they snap in well, like they, yeah, I haven't had any, you know, want, want to fall out after I thought I'd got them all the way in there, which is good. All right, let's rock and roll. Ugh, that kind of feels gross. What the hell just happened? Yeah, my bolt rolled over top of the round. That can't have been good for concentricity. All right, let's try it again. That time it was fine. Have to keep an eye on that. All right, so if you clicked on this video wondering why in the hell someone would spend $400 on a chassis for a $200 rifle, hopefully that explains it. And that's typical, like I expect to shoot groups just as good with the other two stocks. This gun's just an amazing shooter. And that right there is why the 140 grain Spear Gold Dot is my choice for hunting this year. Just an awesome bullet that expands really nicely. All right, I need to switch out stocks and we'll shoot a few with the Boyds. All right, so we're ready to go with the Boyds here. Any of you guys that have this stock will know there's a little tab little plastic tab that you have to get aligned properly so that your magazine is the front magazine catch. Takes a little bit of messing with to get to get it in there right. And I don't quite have this one right. It doesn't hurt anything, but I'm running out of daylight and I don't have time to fool with it because it really doesn't matter. So here we go, back to the 140 grain Hornady match. Five rounds in the magazine. Let's see if we can shoot a group. Whoa. Yeah, something was going on there with the trigger because it went off really easy that time. I wasn't quite settled in. Luckily, it looks like the shot went where I wanted it to. So I'll have to, I'll have to look at that here in just a minute, see if there's something in the Oryx chassis that's interfering with some part of the trigger assembly. All right, no real point of impact shift, very similar size group. So let's move right along to the 140 grain spear gold dot. See how these do. All right, good showing from the Boyds. So let's Go back to the factory stock. Tell you what, one thing I appreciate going back to the factory stock is just how well it fits in there. Like it is a really nice fit. You don't get any rotation. There's no forward and backward slop to the recoil lug. It's just a nice fit. 
where both of the other stocks, when you put it in, things are kind of floppy until you get the screws and it starts keeping it sitting straight. Now, I've always read that you tighten up your back screw first, like get them both pretty snug, and then finish off the back one first. All right. Let's see how we shoot with the factory stock. Now the problem here is I still have the sling swivel on this one, so I need to move my front rest back a little bit. And I need a little higher rear bag. Yeah, so our point of impact definitely moved down a little bit there. Surprised to see that. But the group size held together. That's the good news. All right, one last group with the spear gold dots. Ah, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Finish things off with kind of a crappy group, but that's okay. I'll tell you what, let's go back to the reloading bench. We'll have a closer look at the Oryx chassis and see if maybe we can figure out why the trigger pull was heavier in that gun. Maybe something's interfering. So I'll see you there. Okay, so it turns out the trigger problem was something very simple. I took the action out of the factory stock, started kind of messing around with the trigger and a spent primer that I just dropped on the floor. Yeah, there it is. So a fired spent primer fell out of there. So we do all sorts of crazy high pressure load testing around here, so that's no surprise, but somehow somewhere along the way, I got a primer jammed into the trigger mechanism. So I put it all back together and now the trigger is nice and light. So the only other thing I wanna mention while I've got you here is that I'm a little bit concerned about the finish on this gun. I've noticed a few little shiny silver spots, like can you see that little spot right there by any chance? I'm getting more and more of those as I kind of handle the, the gun and where the action was sitting down in there, there were several silver spots. So before I bolted it together, I filmed a little look at that. So let's go look at that real quick. Well, first thing I should say, like you see the kind of shiny spots there and like back here where the back of the tang sits, you can see couple shiny spots. That's got me a little bit worried about the finish on this dude. Tell you what, let me see if I can get a, yeah, here's a little, little screwdriver and let's uh, pick a spot way down here out of the way. There we go. That was it right there. Now let's see what, yeah, look at that. Is the camera too dark? Let me brighten up the camera a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully now you can see it a little bit better. That's a little bit worrying. I wonder how durable the finish is going to be out here. Now I need to turn the Brightness back down. There we go. I wonder how you know how durable the finish is going to be out here on the parts you see. I don't know. We'll see. So that's not exactly good news. You know, I worry about how this is going to hold up, like the magwell with with magazine insertions and just you know general scratches from wear. We'll have to see how it goes. Things like that don't really bother me too much. I don't mind if you know things look a little bit banged up. I like a little bit of worn in look. So I think that's I mean pretty much it. I think that's where we'll wrap this up. Overall, very happy with the build quality of the Oryx. The ergonomics feel good on the bench, and I can't find much to complain about. We did shoot our best group with the uh, with the gun in the Oryx, but the Boyd's, you know, the Boyd's groups were pretty good as well. I don't know what happened with that last group in the factory stock. That one really surprised me. That was a pretty crappy group for this gun, and the 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 slight the downward point of impact shift as we went along was kind of weird. So I don't really know enough to explain that. I mean, I guess it's, you know, maybe just the different harmonics of the gun in the different stocks. So no real, real good explanation for that. So that's it, folks. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much to everybody who donated, you know, the, uh, the money that went to this, including my long suffering supporters over on Patreon. I haven't given them much reason to support me this year, but a lot of you have hung in there and I, I really do appreciate it. Hopefully things are going to pick back up here. I've got big plans, lots of videos planned. So hopefully I can get on a roll and start getting videos put out more regularly. So that's it folks, I'll see you guys next time.